Blessed afternoon to all. Shall we stand as we receive the body of PC 1269, Kevin Augustus Williams? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned nor shall the flames scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way, you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities nor powers, nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth, 
nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Again, a blessed afternoon to all. This afternoon, we have come to pay our final respects to our dearly departed Kevin Williams. And even more importantly, to give whatever support that we can to those who mourn his loss. As we come this afternoon, there will be heavy hearts. There will be grief. But the Bible tells us we should not grieve like those without hope. And so as we go through this service, our prayer is that you will put your hope in Jesus. As the words that were read said, just know he is our peace. That peace that passes our understanding. That peace that the world cannot give. And he has promised that he will be our comfort and our strength in our times of sorrow. This afternoon on behalf of the pastors, the presbytery, the members of Abundant Life Assembly, we want to offer our deepest condolences to the children, Ashley and Kevin, brother Dwight, sisters, Roxanne and Jennifer, to all the relatives and friends, the coll his colleagues in the Barbados Police Service, and all those who will mourn the passing of their loved one. Can we bow our heads in a word of prayer? Our Father and God, we come to you this afternoon with heavy hearts. God, you see those who mourn. Father, you know the pain that others cannot see. But your word assures us that you will comfort those who mourn. God, the word of the song that we would have heard earlier on said, God, you have been faithful. In life, in death, in every situation, you are faithful. And so we look to you this afternoon, God, for comfort. We look to you for strength. We look to you for the encouragement that we need when we go through these times of pain, these times of sorrow, these times of grief. And as your word tells us, God, we do not mourn like those without hope, but we put our hope in Jesus the one who bore our sins and our shame, the one who took on humanity, that he could feel what we go through. For he said he's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And so even as we go through this time of mourning, God, I pray that you will touch those who need a touch, that you will give them that peace that only you can give. Lord, that you will comfort them in those times when, Lord, everything seems to be falling apart around them, when they feel as though, there's no one that they can look to. May they look to you, Jesus, the off and the finish of our faith. May they commit every situation into your hands and know with confidence, with that blessed assurance that you have already worked things out according to your plans. We thank you for the life that you have lent to us. We thank you, O oh God, for the service that he rendered to family Oh God, to community, to country. For Jesus said he came not to serve, not to be served, but to serve. And as Kevin served, oh God, we thank you for how you enabled him and you empowered him to give of his best to those who were in need. But in your wisdom, you have seen it fit to take him back. And God, you give and you take away. But we bless your name. We thank you, God that we can praise you even in our times of sorrow, that as we go through our times of hurt and grief and whatever situations that we face, that we can call upon you and know that you hear and you answer and you work things out according to your plans. And so, dear God, as we go through this service this afternoon and as we even go to the place of burial, 
God, we ask for your divine guidance. We ask that you will protect, that you will shield, that you will guide and direct us as we go through this time. That you will give all that is needed to those, God, who are hurting, those who are feeling that emptiness that only you know what they're going through. And so we commit them into your hands and we ask, God, that you will comfort, that you will encourage, that you will guide. And that all that is done will be done to bring honor and glory to your name. As we sing the hymns, as we hear the word of God, Lord, may there be something that will encourage, something, God, that will lift those spirits that are down and will give that assurance that all is well. And so we commit this service into your hands, God. We commit our lives to you. And we ask that you, the God of everything, will take control and you will work things out for our good and for your glory, the way that only you can. And so we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. In Jesus' precious name, amen. You, you may be seated. Thank you, Elder Roderick, and good afternoon to everyone. As we prepare for the first tribute, we want to acknowledge the presence of the Commissioner of Police, Mr. Richard Boyce, the Deputy Permanent Secretary uh, in the Attorney General's Office, Mr. Anthony Wilshire, Gazetted Officers, the President of the Police Association, Mr. Mervyn Grace, and members of that association, members of the Barbados Police Service, former Gazetted Officers, members of the Ex-Police Association of Barbados, and of course, as well, members of the Ex-Police Association of New York. Uh, we want to welcome you and extend greetings uh, to all of you. At this time, we will have uh, words of appreciation by Acting Superintendent Adrian Brooms of the senior super acting superintendent, Adrian Bruins from the Barbados Police Service. Welcome him as he comes. Good evening, everyone members of the clergy of this noble house, commissioner of police, senior command team, members of the Barbados Police Service, Williams family, and other members of the congregation, good afternoon to you. I stand here before you to deliver a tribute to the life and memory of our fallen comrade, Kevin Augustus Williams a fine officer and a gentleman. On January 4th, 1997, at the age of 29, Kevin joined our ranks and embarked upon a rewarding police career when he enlisted in the Royal Barbados Police Force, now called the Barbados Police Service. Kevin was a member of the initial training course number 106, and was assigned the number 1269. During the vetting process, it was discovered that he wanted to become a police officer so that he could be directly involved in maintaining law and order. And indeed, his references spoke highly of him. Mr. Ishmael Ruert remarked that his very pleasant personality his eagerness to learn and succeed, and the diligence in which he, he approached every task made him a prime example of a fine young man. Former teacher, Mr. Horace Linton, stated that when he first met Kevin, he was a student of the Wakefield High School, and he was impressed with his manly disposition and the way in which he conducted himself. Mr. Linton further declared that he was a very intelligent, industrious, and polite youngster. Consequently, 
these attributes undoubtedly propelled him to the post of deputy head boy and games captain. Needless to say, he was accepted into the service. And while at the Regional Police Training Center, he gave an admirable performance, particularly in his physical training and in drill. Most of his instructors remarked that his deportment and turnout were always of a very high standard. Commandant Mr. Darwin Dottin, Dottin commented that Constable Williams showed great respect for his seniors and peers and demonstrated that he had the ability to be a great team player. The Commandant also added that Constable Williams' performance on his course demonstrated his aptitude and attributes to perform well as a police officer, and so Kevin did. After leaving training school, Kevin was attached to the District B police station, District C police station, Oystein's police station, and District A police station, his last attachment before his passing. Longstanding colleague and his course mate, Police Constable 1266 Paul Mark, described Kevin as the gentle giant. Constable Mark stressed that he was an extremely kind-hearted and loving person who has the respect of all. He further emphasized that he could not ever remember a time Kevin displayed any acts of anger. Another course mate, Sergeant 1261 Antonia Headley, echoed similar sentiments. She remembered Kevin as a reserved, respectful individual who was always willing to assist his supervisors and peers in any way possible. His colleague and friend, Sergeant 490 Ronald Gittins, described Constable Williams as a very dedicated worker who found it difficult to say no to any task assigned to him. He boasted that Kevin was a true friend and that he was one of the nicest human beings he knew. Sergeant Giddings tearfully said that he will definitely be missed. He will miss his infectious laughter and his clever sense of humor. A number of his supervisors across the aforementioned attachments offered comparable comments describing this individual. They described him as, uh, as hardworking, intellectual, and who showed a keen sense of interest in his work. And this was evident in the manner in which he investigated many cases, which included fatal accidents, murders, suicide, assaults, and domestic disputes. But Kevin was also an avid sportsman. He excelled in road tennis, basketball, weight training, and especially in the game of pool, in which he represented the service. And during his tenure, he was selected as vice captain of the police pool team. He was also a beneficiary of a number of training courses facilitated by the service. And these included senior constables refreshers course, electronic interview training, computer law enforcement, accident and collision investigation, officer safety training, domestic, work, domestic violence workshop, and field training officer course. The coordinators of the senior constable refreshers course, they said that he approached the course in a very keen and positive manner. They stated that he interacted well with the other participants and that he shared his knowledge and experience with them. They further highlighted that he was a pleasant person who maintained exemplary discipline and deportment throughout the course. Apart from his professional accomplishments, he also excelled in academics. He was the proud holder of certificates in English language, mathematics, biology, history, accounts, and commerce. As his divisional commander, I too remember him as a reserved individual, yes, but also a very dedicated worker. You only had to tell him what the task was, 
and without hesitation, and without complaint, he will perform that task to the highest degree of professionalism. You see, Kevin understood duty. He understood what it meant to give a life of service to his fellow mankind. Indeed, he was an asset to the, to the service and unselfishly devoted 26 years of his life to this noble institution. Ashley, little Kevin, your dad was a good policeman. He fought manfully up to the time of his passing and he will be greatly missed by all in the Barbados Police Service, especially the family at District 8 Police Station. So rest in peace, comrade. Rest in peace, Constable 1269 Williams, until we meet again. We think about you always. We talk about you still. You have never been forgotten, and you never will. We hold you close within our hearts, and there you will remain to walk and guide us through our lives until we meet again. And so on the behalf of the Commissioner of Police and all other members of the Barbados Police Service past and present, I express sincere thanks to you, his family, for sharing him with us and I offer our deepest condolences in your moment of loss. The experience which we shared was, yes, a shared one. He learned from us, and we most certainly learned from him. May he rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Acton Senior Superintendent Holmes. What a wonderful tribute. A gentle soul one who was dedicated, one who knew what his calling was and who did it with a sense of purpose, something that we can all emulate, especially those of us who serve. Shall we stand as we ask God to lead us as we go through this time of grief, as we join the Barbados Police Service Band as they play, Lead Us, Heavenly Father, Lead Us. us, Heavenly Father, lead us o'er the world's tempestuous sea. Guard us, guide us, keep us, feed us, for we have no help but Thee. Yet possess in every blessing for God our Father be. Savior, breathe forgiveness for us all our weakness thou dost know. Thou didst tread this earth before us Thou didst feel its keenest woe. Lone and dreary, faint and weary, Through the desert thou didst go. Spirit of our God descending, Fill our hearts with heavenly joy. Love with every passion blending, pleasure that can never cloy. Thus provided, pardon guided, nothing can for peace be strong. Please remain.
remain standing for the first scripture reading. It's taken from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 4, and is read by PC 1266, Paul Mark. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and there shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we'll have a solo, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone, by Donella Weeks Oliver. Good afternoon, church. I just want to say that he is a comforting God in every single time. He is indeed a comforting God.
The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God, who called me here below, will be forever. Amen. Our chains are gone. We've been set free. God has paid the ransom for us. And this evening, we can rejoice even in our times of sorrow. Praise God. At this time, we'll have the eulogy by Dwight Williams. And that will be immediately followed by a tribute by the band of the Barbados Police Service. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First, I want to thank everyone for, your, for joining us here to celebrate the life of my brother, Kevin Augustus Williams, better known as Willie. Both Kevin and myself live with our mom, while Dwight and Jennifer live abroad. Kevin was an awesome dad to his children, making arrangements every weekend to spend quality time with his children. Besides our mother's good looks, Kevin inherited her talent for cooking. He loved the kitchen. When I attended work on Sundays, when I get home from work, he would greet me and say to, to sis, your food is there. Kevin had a passion for law enforcement, so when he applied, I knew he was gonna be accepted. He was fit for the job. Kevin was serious, he was a motivator, a diligent worker, and most of all, a no-nonsense person. So at this time, I will take this opportunity to express my heartfelt gratitude to all of you who are here to support my family and myself. I say thank you to my family, both near and far, who sent their prayers and words of encouragement. I thank my neighbors, Kevin's friends, and for their prayers. I thank my friends who supported me through this time at work, my colleagues, and a huge thanks to the Barbados Police Service, who stood at Kevin's side who give valuable support, calls, hospital visits, and encouraging praise. May Kevin rest in peace and rise in glory. Love you, big bro. Good afternoon, church. At least some of the things that I did not have in my eulogy it will come in my sister's speech a while ago. Actually, it's not a speech as such, but I do acknowledge the protocol already established. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a sad moment, a very sad moment, for the entire Williams, Lewis, Dublin family, and also the Lucas families. The Barbados Police Service, friends and neighbors of the Headley's Land community, 
and the Gardaland community. I began questioning myself about the death of my brother, my loving brother. But it took that moment for me to realize that the Lord give it and the Lord take it. Now please excuse me if I'm not standing upright. It is not the best moment for me or the family. Kevin Augustus Williams, affectionately called Willie by many, was the second son and offspring or the fourth children of the late Pauline Gustina Williams. He was born in the village of Edinburgh, Kingston, St. Vincent. I was the first of our mother, Kevin second, Jennifer third, and Roxanne the last. Although Kevin was like a powerful giant compared to me, a tiny me, he had to abide by the fact and respect me as big brother. My brother then migrated to Barbados in the late 70s when he was about eight years old to live with our man. He later attended the St. Mary's Primary School, then went on to the St. Leonard's Boys School and later to the Wakefield Secondary School where he obtained several CXE and GCE certificates. He also attended the, the Barbados O-Level Institute. I was around that time and I joined him in attending, thinking I was a big maths man, but he showed me up where I had to be copying answers from his book to get homework correctly. My brother later met a very beautiful young lady, Paulette Barrow. And on March of 2000, they produced a very beautiful little girl, Ashley. My brother and Ashley were bonded in love that no one could get between. It would have seemed like our mom were producing some police sons because I became a police officer in 1989 in the Royal Antigua and Barbados Police Force. And now her younger son became a police officer in January 1997 in the Royal Barbados Police Force, now known as the Barbados Police Service. My brother was very dedicated to his work and took his job very seriously. Whenever he paid me visits in Tortola, where I was a police, I had to be very careful in the line of my duties whenever he was around because he would have been giving some command to individuals and make way to arrest. During his rotation of the various districts, he met with woman police officer, Alicia Padmore in District C. And in 2008, both produced a very handsome son, Kevin, AKA Broccoli. I guess his name was called Broccoli because up to today's date, he liked to see broccoli in his food. Again, my brother and his son had a very good bond of love between them. My brother had a very special portion of duties, which he never wanted anyone to interrupt. When he had to pick up and drop off 
his sweet daughter, Ashley, and Broccoli from school, please don't get in his way. He was very dedicated to that and also taking them to the beach or Shefet. Again, he would have given you his belly out, so to speak, but please do not interrupt him when spending luxurious time with his daughter, Ashley. During my visits, I was also part of the special duties and beach team. I noticed that my brother had a powerful build in muscles, and in spending some time around him, I realized that joining our neighbor, Eric, in his gym was part of his routine, our daily routine, sorry. I spent some time going to the gym with him, but up to today's date, I haven't seen any difference in my muscles, yet his kept growing. He had liked to fish, or uh, fishing. My best joke with him was when we both went to fish in Bronx Beach. I strike the first small black belly or black fish. My brother then hollow, Dwight, look, I got some big coming here, here boy. I began getting jealous when I also began to help him pull in the line, thinking that was a very good catch, uh, greater than mine. Only to realize there was no fish when we pull in, but a great old piece of iron. <laughs> Playing dominoes with the guys as Gardaland was part of our fun. I remember we were playing together as partners, and just to play that simple card to let him domino or win the game, I played a bad shot, as we call it. My brother got vexed with me for almost the whole week, but he couldn't stay that long because he likes to like to have his big brother around him. He had a passion of love for playing pool. He was always armed with his pool stick anywhere he traveled. When visiting me in Tortola, he would have armed himself with that pool stick to beat the guys. His passion for playing pool on him to be a member of the Barbados Police Service pool team. He received many awards for games they played. Sadly enough, my brother played his last pool game on the night of March the 30th and was hospitalized the following day after dropping off his son, Brockley, to attend a school sport at Usain Bolt. After battling for his life in the hospital for about two weeks, it was on that day, that 17th day of April, sometime around the evening, I received that news. My brother had passed. He was fairly young, a young man, and would have made his 56th birthday. On the 9th of August. On the 9th of August. On the 10th of August. 10th of August this year. Yes. He died in the service. And I know he would be sadly missed. He would be sadly missed by his loving daughter and, and handsome. handsome son, Kevin. His families, the Barbados police pool team, pool team his co workers, thus the Barbados police service on the whole. I last heard from my loving brother on the 1st of March when we were discussing his vacation to visit me a few months later. 
My brother was a very loving and caring person who makes friends very easily. He never mind a big crowd was when visiting the good, his good friend shop. He would have bought a drink for everyone there. May my brother soul rest, rest in, in peace. peace. While I am still on my feet, I would like to express thanks and gratitude to Reverend Dr. Michael Holford, Holford. 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 And, his and his congregation for all for following us. You know, oh boy. Well, at the Assembly of Life Church for the service, the Commissioner of Barbados Police Service, for his support in making this a state funeral, Superintendent Mr. Boom, Superintendent Ms. Stanford, the officers who transported my brother to the hospital, the doctors and the nurses at the hospital staff who okay. attended to my brother, families, families and friends who traveled from abroad, the Williams and Lewis and Douglas family, and the, and the entire congregation, I say, I say thank you, thank you, yeah. thank you.
second scripture reading. It's read from Psalm 23. It is read by Master Kevin T. Williams. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You are running, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare tables for, before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Please remain standing as we join our voices and sing, When peace like a river, it is well with my soul. It is 
is well, it is well with my soul. Lord, is the day when the faith shall be sighed. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. With my soul, it is well. It is well with my soul. Amen. Even in the time of sorrow, we can say. It is well with our souls. Please remain standing as Reverend Dr. Michael Holford comes to give the sermon. Good afternoon again to all. As we sang that hymn together, it is a reminder at times a comfort that while we mourn, there is a God who strengthens us. There is a God who keeps us. And while we may not understand these moments, while we may have questions in our minds, God who is sovereign over all things can bring that wellness to our souls. Once again, I want to extend condolences on behalf of the pastors, elders, members and friends of the Abundant Life Assembly to all of you who are grieving this afternoon. Before we take our seats, I just want to read from scripture and then pray. I am reading from the epistle, the letter to Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses one to four, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. This is the word of the Lord. Therefore I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of our God, our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Father, we come before you in this moment with grieving hearts. Father, we come before you in this moment where there are many questions, Lord. We come before you, O God, because you are the God over all creation. You are our peace. And over these next few moments, we ask, O God, that you will minister to each and every heart, those who are in this sanctuary and those who are watching right now, or we'll watch in the future. So Lord, we give you the thanks and we give you the praise in Jesus' name, amen. You may take your seats. Thank you, Elder Roderick. Thank you to the police service band. In the few minutes that I have, I just want to express to you what the Lord is saying to us in this moment. 
Today we mourn the passing of an officer of the Barbados Police Service. The Barbados Police Service whose motto is to protect, serve, and reassure. I want to indicate to us this afternoon that those words protect, serve, and reassure or assure are attributes of God himself. For God is the good shepherd and he protects his sheep. Jesus Christ was the one who came not to be served but to serve and to give himself as a ransom for us. And the Holy Spirit is our assurance, our reassurance that we are saved, that we have come to know Christ as Lord and Savior and we are now new creatures. This officer who has passed was not just an officer, he was a partner, he was a father, he was a sibling, a relative, a friend. And your expressions of grief today, your expressions of grief in the days past and in the days to come are a right and appropriate expression of a celebration of someone you loved. It is all right to cry. It is all right to shed tears. It is all right to grieve. The word of God tells us there are seasons and there are seasons for joy and there are seasons for mourning and this is such a season. And it is God who has built us, built us human beings to be able to express celebration in tears. For if we did not love that person, if we did not have some type of relationship with them, we would not miss them. We would not grieve them. So God is saying today, while he is able to comfort, he gives us the allowance to grieve as well. So our prayer is that you would know this peace and this comfort and this strength and the healing that comes from Almighty God in times of loss. But there is a greater comfort that God wants us to experience that goes beyond coming from a place of grieving to joy. He wants us to exhibit or to experience the comfort and peace knowing that we are safe. We live in a world where we seek safety, whether directly or indirectly. We want to be safe. We want to know that as we sang, that it all is well. Now it is correct as an authority figure, as Kevin was, an authority figure in the community and an authority figure in the nation that a certain level of respect and honor should be given. So I think it is excellent in the way of the pomp and the pageantry, the emotion, the expressions of tribute, tributes were done today. It is deserving and it says to us that persons in such roles deserve respect deserve honor. Our Barbados Police Service, every single person who is a member of the Barbados Police Service deserves respect and honor based on their office. I remember growing up in a Barbados, in a Barbados where we respected the police no matter what rank they were at. I don't know if you live, grew up in that Barbados, but I grew up in that Barbados that once you saw someone in uniform, a fear and respect came over you. That type of respect is decreasing in our society. 
And my prayer is, as the Bible tells us to pray for kings and all men and persons in authority, that we would pray that that level of respect returns to our nation. For it is easier to abide by the laws of the land if we respect those who protect, serve, and reassure. Amen? That amen should be a lot louder. Amen? amen? So when we express the type of respect that was shown and is being shown to Kevin today, it sends a signal to our community, it sends a signal to our nation that our officers still need respect. And we could spend the rest of this day talking about the factors that may have led to this disrespect or this depletion in respect, whether internally or externally of the force. And yes, we have to address those things. But I'm saying to us in this moment, let us remember that God has given these who operate in this function, in this office, the authority to bring peace and right living to our land. Amen? So while we are saying these things and while we acknowledge these things, God has a greater goal that goes beyond societal morality because while that is good, societal morality cannot save us from that thing that is deep rooted in our hearts. And that thing that is deep rooted in our hearts is sin. For the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And while the police service are dedicated to dealing with criminality in Barbados, the spirit of God is dedicated to eradicating sin from individual lives. So that when we eventually pass from this life, for we all will come to this place, no matter how healthy we are, no matter how strong we are, I commend the officers that had to and will again lift this casket. You are strong men. I do not envy you. But as strong as you are and as fit as you might be, all of us, according to Hebrews 9, 27, will die. For it is appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment. So we want morality to return to our land. We want respect to return to those persons who uphold morality. But what we want and what God wants most of all is that we would give our sin, confess our sin over to him so that we might be saved from the judgment of sin. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So that great comfort, that great confidence that God gives is the assurance that when he says those who would confess their sin, who would confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father, that they shall be saved, we can know for sure that we are saved. I thank God for the Barbados Police Service. I thank God for the work that they're doing as it pertains to crime in Barbados. I have recognized since they have put put certain initiatives into place, I don't see certain things occurring as they were occurring months ago. And we can give a clap for that and we can give thanks to God for that. But what you can't stop is sin. What you can't arrest is the wickedness in our hearts. Only God can do that. 
So in this moment, as I come to a close, we may be living according to the law of the land, but are we living according to God's law? He says, if you love me, you obey my commandments. And we cannot obey based on our own flesh. He has to give us that desire. The scripture says that God's will is that men would be saved. And he has made that way through the death and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, is there anyone who would say in this moment, I recognize that I am a sinner. I recognize that I cannot save myself. I recognize that the only one who can save me is the one who died for my sin. If that is you this afternoon, could you raise your hand so we could pray with you, wherever you might be. Officers or civilians, wherever you, I see those hands. I see those hands. Father, we come to you again in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you today, God, that you do not see rank. You do not see position. You do not see status in life, but you see souls who are in need of salvation. Father, as your word tells us, we must confess our sin. And you are faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness. So Lord, we come to you this afternoon. We come to you with humble hearts. We come to you confessing our sin, O oh God, asking you to cleanse us and to forgive us and to make us new. Father, we thank you, O oh God, that this is your harvest of souls. We thank you, O oh God, that you give us the gift of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, mighty God, that you are able, O oh God, in spite of ourselves, to save us to the uttermost, O oh Lord, so that we may testify that you are Lord and God of our lives. So we give you all thanks and we give you all praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. At this time, I will ask the family to stand as I ask Elder Greenwich to pray the prayer of comfort for the family. Could the family please stand? Elder Roderick. Shall we pray? Our Father and God, you see those who stand this afternoon and even those who might not be able to stand. But even more importantly, God, you know their hearts. You feel their pain. God, you know all that they are going through and all that they will go through. And God, as we lift them to you, God, the God of comfort, the God who is able to heal and to deliver, the Lord God who is able to carry them through the valley of the shadow of death, the one who is able to keep them even in the situations that they might be in for your purposes to be worked out in their lives. God, we give you thanks that we can call upon you with that assurance that you are able and more than able to attend to every need and to deal with every situation. We ask, God, that you will comfort and you will encourage them as they go through the days and the weeks and the months and even the years ahead, as they remember their loved one, God, with fondness, may those memories of the good times flood their hearts and help to keep away, God, that pain and that sense of despair that the enemy will try to bring into their minds. God, we ask that you will give them the strength to go from day to day, to bear up, God, under the pressures and the stresses that they might go through as a result of this death. For you, O oh God, are able to carry them. You are able to keep them. You are able to work things out, God, for their good and for your glory. 
And so we commit them into your hands and we ask that you who know what is best will work things out according to your plans. Equip and empower them with all that they need for this time and the times ahead. Be with them, God, in every circumstance. May they feel your presence. May they know your peace. And may they find comfort in you. May your joy be their strength. And may they give you thanks and praise even in their time of sorrow for the life that you have lent to them. As we have heard of the good things that their loved ones would have done, their loved one would have done, of his kindness and his love to them, may they, these be the things that they will hold to that will keep them as they go through this time. And so, God, we thank you this evening that we can commit them into your hands with the assurance that you can and you will work things out according to your plans. And so we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand as we sing the final hymn for this part of the service, How Great Thou Art.
How great Thou art! How great Thou art! In Christ shall come a shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou that you remain where you are until the casket is taken out of the sanctuary.
जिस रंग में
Shall we pray? Almighty and everlasting God, we come to you in this moment asking you to give peace to our hearts. We thank you, God, for all that has occurred thus far. And even as we go through these next few moments, we ask, O oh Lord, that you would comfort and give strength. So we give you all thanks and we give you all praise in Jesus' name. Amen. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God to take out of this world the soul of Kevin Williams, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for that blessed hope when the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words.
trumpet of the Lord shall song and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore. And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share, when his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll Let us lay before the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder. The hymn when we all get to heaven.
the hymn we are marching to Zion. Shall we pray? Father and God, we can go no further with Kevin. We thank you for his life. We thank you for those he has impacted. We thank you for the legacy that remains. And we ask you, O oh God, in the days, weeks, and months to come, that you would give peace that passes all understanding, that would guard the hearts and minds of those who mourn. So Father, we give everything to you, our emotions, our pain, our sorrow, and we ask, O oh God, that you would replace it one day with joy. So we give you all praise, and we give you all thanks. Even as we leave this place, may we go home in peace and in safety. In Jesus' name, amen.